Uh, it is my great pleasure to introduce to you today, Professor Sonia Vaj Borges. Dr. Borges is currently Assistant Professor of African History at Drexel University. She received her MA in African History from the University of, Lis of Lisbon, her PhD, magna cum laude, in Educational Sciences and Education History from Berlin's Humboldt University. And in 2019, she conducted her, or she concluded her postdoctoral research on consciousness and revolution at the Center for Place, Culture and Politics in the City, of, uh, City University of New York's Graduate Center. Professor Borges describes herself as a militant interdisciplinary historian and longtime social and political organizer. Her research interests include people's silenced histories as well as their actions and roles in times of fundamental sociopolitical change. Among the topics that her published research addresses are liberation struggles and social movements around the world and their internationalism and solidarity. More specifically, she investigates how these movements relate to the fields of education, memory, and space and architecture through practices of anti-colonial, decolonial, and militant research and writing. She has several, public, several publications and has given numerous invited talks on these and related topics. For instance, between 2007 and 2011, she co-edited with, with uh, Edwina Vaz, booklets entitled in Portuguese, Cadernos Consciência e Resistência Negra, Black Consciousness and Resistance Notebooks, her monograph, Na Pode Espera, Percursos nos Bairros da Estrada Militar, Santa Filomena e Encosta Nascente, or in English, In the Dust of Waiting, Paths or Trajectories in the Neighborhoods of Estrada Militar, or Military Road, uh, Santa Filomena e Encosta Nascente. This book was published in 2014 by Portugal's Fundação Calust Gulbenkian, which is sort of comparable to Portugal, to the Guggenheim in Portugal, I guess I would say. Um, Dr. Borges has co-directed two films with Berlin-based Portuguese filmmaker Filipa uh, Cesar uh, from 2016, uh, Navigating the Pilot School, and from 2021, Scola de Tcharaf, uh, Tarrafalf School, I think. Um, she has also, um, she has also uh, participated in two exhibitions, Lugares da Memoria, or Places of Memory at, Cultu at Cultur Gest in Lisbon, and uh, Leitura do Mang, Reading Mang, both from this year. And her most recent book is entitled Militant Education, Liberation, Struggle, and Consciousness, the P uh, PAIGC, or PAIGC, Education in Guinea-Bissau, 1963-1978. I think most of you know this, but PAIGC or PAIGC is the Portuguese acronym for the um, African Party for the Independence of Guinea-Bissau and Cabo Verde, founded famously by Emil Cabral. Uh, so currently, Professor Borges is working on a book project uh, grounded on her concept of the walking archives, which fo uh, focuses on the liberation struggle, memory, generation, imaginaries, tempo, and temporalities. Her talk today, as you saw, is entitled Liberation Struggle in School Manuals, another acronym, the Frelimo Math Book in Mozambique and the International Collaborations. Frelimo, again, is Portuguese acronym for Frente de Libertação de Mozambique or Mozambique and Liberation Front, which is the name of uh, both of the anti-colonial uh, liberation movement and the current uh, governing party in Mozambique. And in this talk, Professor Borges will be presenting her most recent research for here for the first time, so we're very privileged. Um, so on this very cold uh, Wisconsin day, please join me in giving Professor Sonia Borges a very warm welcome. Thank you. Professor Borges. <laughs> You're muted. It, <laughs> it happens. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you very much, Professor Madureira, for the kind introduction. Uh, uh, just uh, a small correction. Um, it's, it's not. It's not your fault at all. Uh, Scola Taraf, the last film that I uh, made together with Filippa Cesar, Taraf is the uh, port is the Creole word for mangrove. So it's, it's the schools in the mangrove. Okay. But thank so you very much. <laughs> but thank you very much for the kind introduction. Uh, and good morning to everyone in the audience, and thank you for your presence. I'm delighted to be here today to talk about this special mat material very dear to me, the school manual and the liberation struggle. Within the period of 1960s and 1960 and 1974, the time span of the war of liberation from Portuguese colonialism in several colonized territories can also be described 
as a bully mundo period. It makes sense to call it to call it bully mundo, a Ghanaian and Cape Verdean uh, Creole expression as well as a name that it, that means bullir mundo to agitate the world. In a way, it means to set a revolution in motion. It is also in this time span that liberation movements such as Frelimo, the PIGC, the MPLA came to be, although today the same acronym for each of them means different things and different politics. Nevertheless, these revolutionary liberation movements, their theory, their militancy, their struggles, their stories and practices continues to have an impact as a force for Buliru Mundo. That is, it continues to agitate collective bodies and imaginations in a never to be completed process of struggles. And I'll share with you my uh, slides that I prepared to discuss here with you today. If I'm able to. <laughs> Share. What I'm going to do for the next 40 minutes or so is to give you a sense of the kind of work I do and how I do it. I'm going to present you an article that I'm working on now, derived from my research on militant education, liberation struggle, and consciousness. But this time, I'll, I will not focus on Guinea Bissau but instead on Mozambique and the Mozambique National Liberation Front, in short, Frelimo. Today, I'm going to focus on school manuals produced by Frelimo in collaboration with other supporters. Designed for the education structure during the liberation struggle. I'll focus in, in one discipline in particular, mathematics and the math textbook that was produced for the first two school grades during that time. My purpose today is to give everyone in the audience a rich sense of the importance of the school manuals for the understanding of the ideals of the liberation struggle and how their vision of their present and future situation was portrayed in these materials and how important they intend to be, they intended to be for the conscientialization and preparation of the future generation. I will do this by briefly situating the liberation movement, followed by the goals on education field, and will complement the information with content of the math textbook. I must say that I have been searching for these uh, manuals for about nine years, and I found them in a boring day while, while home office during the still ongoing uh, pandemic on an online book antiquarian while scrolling the internet for random things in my mind. Throughout this presentation, I will share with you some images and I, and I will con comment on them in order to give you a material sense of the research, but also to, to try to draw some light to questions raised by me and other scholars in terms of how to build the country after independence and how was this transmitted during the process of war. So let's start. The Mozambique National Liberation Front, Frelimo, in Portuguese, Frente de Libertação de Moçambique, as Professor Madureira already uh, introduced, was founded in 1962 during a conference that took place in Dar es Salaam. The liberation movement was, merge of, was a merge of three major political parties of Mozambique, the diaspora, namely the Union Democrática de Moçambique, created in, 96, in 1960 in Rhodesia, the Union Africana de Moçambique, Independente, founded in 1961 in Malawi, and the Union Africana de Moçambique, founded in Kenya, Tanganyika. Like any other African nationalist movement, 
The Fray Lima was a result of a colonialist Portuguese rule in the territory. The source of unity between these diasporic movements was, and according, according to Eduardo Mondlane, and I quote, the common experience in suffering together while working as forced labor on the large sisal plantations, while clearing the thick forest for planting, planting cotton, carrying heavy loads of it for hundreds of miles to the market centers monopolized by Portuguese and foreign, foreign concessionary companies. Mozambique unity was born out of the toiling together in the deep, hot, narrow, and dust ridden shafts of gold, diamond, and coal mines. Our national unity was born out of the common experience of trying to escape together from Portuguese prison, forced labor, palmatory beatings, and political persecutions. End of quote. Such as, has ha such as what happened with the PIAGC in Guinea-Bissau, in order to develop and consolidate the structure of Frelimo, the promotion and acceleration of training of cadres, the promotion of literacy activities, and the creation of schools wherever possible, took, took a central aspect of the, of the struggle. Since 98% were about that, the of the Mozambique population were illiterate due to the restrict Portuguese colonial educational policies. With his headquarters located in, Tanz in Tanzania, a, re a refugee influx of Mozambicans to the country increased during the late 1964, not only to join Frelimo struggle, but also to run from the war. The liberation struggle, or the liberation front, sought legitimacy through a mixture of humanitarian projects, inclusive the creation of Instituto Mozambique, in English, the Mozambique Institute, that would regulate and provide education for the refugees uh, and the youth and others who were not able to read or write. Due to the internal conflicts, students, teachers, and administrative personnel the institute doors were closed in 1968. As a substitute, it was opened in 1970 in Bugamoyo, Tanzania, at the Frelimo High School. Other Frelimo schools existed in the Tanzania territory, namely in the, refugee camp, in the refugee camps of Ratumba and Tunduru. After 1965, other schools were situated in the Mozambique liberated areas, namely in the region of Cabo, Cabo Delgado and Niassa. Samora Machel, who, was substitute, who, who substitute Eduardo Mondlane, assassinated on 3rd of February of 1969, assumed the Frelimo direction in 1970 and remained as such until his death in 1986. From his 70 years of leadership, Michel left avail available several writings concerning the Frelimo and the role of education. From where we can empathize the writings like with titles, Educate the Man to Win the War, Create a New Society, and Develop the Country from 1970s, Sowing the Seeds of Revolution from 1971, A Study of the Mozambique Youth, from 1976, making the school a base for people to take power from 1974. And finally, in education, we'll only invest in a fertile ground from 1981. A common thread in these texts are the ideas of the training of the new man and new society, and the importance of what he called revolutionary education to achieve these ends. On his writings, Michel described this new society as a strong, healthy, and prosperous in which men free from all exploitation would cooperate for the progress of all. For such end, it was necessary to create, and I quote, 
an attitude of solidarity between people to enable to carry, to carry out collective work, which presupposes the elimination of individu individualism, de de developing a health revolutionary morality, which promotes the liberation of women and creation of, new, of a new generation with a collective feeling of responsibility that required the destruction of inherited corrupted ideas and tastes, tastes, end of quote. Education was crucial in this project and should prepare the men to internalize the new society and its requirements and therefore create and train these new men, and I again quote, that will be able in contact with the outside world to assimilate critically the ideas and experience of other peoples and to pass on them the fruit of our thought practice, matter of making everyone feel the need to serve the people, to take a share in the production and to respect manual labor, to free initiative and develop the sense of responsibility." End of quote. The education should be put in practice, should then be scientific, political, and practical. Scientific, and here another quote of Michelle, study, uh, scientific study in our schools is therefore seen as a closely, closely linked to political study and the battle against ideas, values, and behaviors belonging to the enemy society. In the same way, study is closely tied in our schools to practical production. And as our struggle is a liberation action, the, the, the decisive step towards the creation of a new culture at the service of the mankind for the utilization of science for the benefit, for the benefit of the working masses. To resume Michel's thought, he proposed the, develop, the development of a new mentality that would lead to a new society, to and, uh, to and the, de the development and survival of the created structures, such as such was an important step to sustain the struggle, and above all, the creation of a political consciousness. Education should then guide students and teachers to accumulate the empirical knowledge of the masses, analyze it in a critical and objective way in order to develop knowledge and science for the, for the benefit of society. Frelimo self-proclaimed to be a Marxist party and Samora Machel adopted socialist principles to help liberate Mozambique from colonialism. I will not focus here on socialism, but on the transition to socialism. In 1990, in, an, in their 1990 study, Education and Social Transformation in the Third World, Martin Carnoy and Joel Samov approached these new states that emerged from revolutionary movements as transition or conditional states instead of defining a priori such states as socialists, even though some states proclaim as themselves as such. The authors prefer to use the terms social transformation and transition to describe the process of transforming of, transforming of one social structure into another. The argument presented for such approach is that this also contributes to research on socialism by examining the practice of those who say they were building socialism in their country. In transition societies, education was seen as a route to all things. And it was, and I quote Carnoy uh, and some of work, expected to be the place where appropriate ideas, values, and worldviews will be developed so that from the process of schooling, there emerges a new person. Not simply someone with skills, but someone with an understanding of his or her own role in the world and of what is important for that society. 
the schools are also expected to assume much of the responsibility for recruiting personnel for, for future uh, leadership positions in this society, in these societies. Religion, race, wealth, and gender are no longer to be the criteria for choosing leadership, end of quote. End of quote. To achieve this envisioned future required societies to do extensive work that involved the creation of schools, literacy crusades, training of cadres, reform of the school systems and, for, and of the school curriculum, and consequently, uh, the production of the school manuals. And here I share with you the, the cover of the first school manual produced by uh, the Felimo. Produced in 1968 as a first draft and printed in 1971 in Germany in the Druckerei Vorschrift in Erfurt, with a distribution of 75,000 copies just in Mozambique, numbers that I still need to confirm, the Mathematica Primera Class, Math First Grade School, became the first school manual produced especially for Black African, Mozambicans, teachers and, teach and students. The project that was large, that was already being developed under similar circumstances by teachers in territories like Guinea-Bissau that in 1965 produced their first reading textbook was now too being collectively developed by a group of teachers from different nationalities under the coordination of Achim Kindler, a German professor from the German Democratic Republic. As a GDR or German Democratic Republic official in Tanzania, supporting the Felimo movement, Kindler started his work as a teacher and member of the Solidarité Comité at the Mozambique Institute in 1967 to December 1969. As a collective production, the Max textbook was printed and distributed through a cooperation between the Fralimo with the addition of the Conference of Nationalist Organizations of the Portuguese Colonies, in short, CONSP and with the support of the Bund der Evangelische Kirche in the GDR and the Okumenische Commission, making use of special funds of their anti-racist program from the Centrale Okumenische Rat der Kirchen, located in Canterbury. As a result of this cooperation, the textbook was distributed and used as part of the math curriculum by other liberation movements in other, ter in other territories occupied by the Portuguese colonial rule. Such was the case of Angola by the People's Movement of Liberation of Angola, MPLR, and Guinea-Bissau by the PIGC. Most of these international uh, collaborations can be found in the book and its lessons, as you can see here from this set of images. Here we have some images that appear in the textbook where country flags are represented, the stamps combined with the exercise, and I'll translate that for you. Jaime, which is the name of a person, has a stamp collection. 48 are from Angola and 35 from Guinea. 17 of his, of his stamps he wants to give to his friend to get some stamps from Mozambique. How many stamps? from Angola and Guinea does he, does he have? How many stamps from those countries will he be left with after he gives 17 to his friend? But you can also see here on the first, on the first page, the, ref the reference to each movement together with the German Democratic Republic. We have here Frelimo, MPLA, PAGC, and here the production of the where the, uh, the production of the book in the, G in the GDR with the name of Joaquin, uh, Joaquin Kindler and the Republica Democratica Alemão States for German Democratic Republic. And here you have the flags of, of, each, of, the, of each of the movements. We have reference to, to the cons and the stamps uh, of each of, 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 the, 
of the country, so to say. The first class, a uh, school lesson in the textbook starts with the following quote. Trelimu put, put this map uh, book in your, in your hand. This book will help you to achieve a good knowledge of such an important subject as mathematics. Study it diligently and treat this book very carefully. After you, many other comrades will use it too. So don't lose it, don't write on, don't write on it, and don't dirty it. Exercises should be done in a separate notebook. We wish you success and success in the study of, math of mathematics. The textbook is accompanied by image of a mother in front of the house saying goodbye to her children. Both of them carry their little wooden suitcases, dressed in, dressed in blue, green shorts, and white shirts. The image, the image let understand that they were going, they were, that they were on their way to school. The primary colors in this uh, image, as well as one that you can see on the cover that I showed you before, blue, green, red, and sometimes uh, black, white, and orange dictate the palette of colors present in the textbooks. This image that you see, or this ideal image of a daily routine of leaving home to go to school, deeply contrasts with the content of the lessons. The students were faced with math problems, problems that, much, that very much represent the conditions under which they were learning. The cheerful image of two children saying goodbye to their mother to go to school contrasts with the image of military trucks, uh, of military trucks, and uniformed military and rifles mix it together with zebras, elephants, ducks, traditional houses, fruits, and fishes. I will not focus here on solving with you the math exercises. It will be certainly a nice challenge and I'm sure I will be having a lot of fun. I'll put more emphasis on the content of these exercises of the school uh, of the second grade manual. And I will share with you the cover here, uh, having in mind eight lessons. So this is the, sec is the book cover of the math for the second grade and you have the teacher you have the students you have a mixed class and you have several uh, uh, exercises they are that they are doing at that time and it is important to pay attention to the colors and the way that the uh, students are addressed and what kind of uh accessoires they are bringing like the the hand scarves or the 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 head scarves or the 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 hats The students were faced with math problems that very much represent the conditions under which they were learning. And I'm repeating again, I'm very sorry, I'll, but I'll continue. The cheerful image of two children saying goodbye to their mother to go to school contrasts with the image of military trucks before the military, the rifles mix it together with zebras, elephants and ducks, traditional houses, fruits and fishes. I'll not focus here on resolving the exercise, but I'll put more emphasis on the exercise of the uh, second grade manual. Uh, following the political message of the first grade, the textbook, uh, Mathematica Segunda Class, Math Second Grade from 1972, opens with the following message, and I quote, education is the basis of our total liberation. Education is a front, is a front of, of the struggle, as important as a line on fire. The message is also accompanied or complemented with a red and black uh, image of agriculture site. Integrate, in, integrating the image of a cooperative building that we can see here on the back, uh, more specifically the Eduardo Mondlan uh, Cooperative, Important to note in this image is the representation of gender, the presence of agricultural, agricultural objects such as the hoe and the manual plow. 
the presence of animals in the stable, as well as the banana trees representing the plantation. And we notice under, under a canopy, the presence of machinery, such as a tractor and another machine that appears to be a small generator. The image sets the tone of the political and economic lessons we will be fine throughout the textbook, translating the socialist ideas that Fralimo had for Mozambique. There is also the presence of guerrilla in uniform, uniformed and armed doing uh, military exercises. But this image as the math exercise let understand a world that goes beyond carrying guns. They appear here working in the kitchen and also in the farms working with peasants. To give two examples here, I translate two of the exercises. During a political class, these guerrilla, uh, three, guerrilla, three guerrillas work, work in the kitchen of a base, 23 comrades from this group attend the classes. How many comrades are in, the, are in this group? Another exercise goes as follows. A group of guerrillas sent five comrades to the village near their base to help the peasants. During the, same, during the same time, 21 comrades were washing their military uniforms and the uniforms of the comrades who were helping the peasants. The image I show you of the opening lesson of the second grade school announces other uh, spaces that I will touch briefly on them, starting with the mashamba, a Swahili word for farmland. Here is a collage of some exercises present in the book where the farmland work is linked to the work in a cooperative. Such relation would also repeat uh, with the work on the plantation. And here is an image too. And there was an exercise to sow, saying uh, that three groups of seven farmers each harvest coconuts on the plantation, and that the six removed the shelf of the, and, and transferred the coconuts to the cooperative's warehouse. How many people are working on that plantation? This image is also related. Uh, with other exercises, uh, not just with the peasants, but also with the fishermen. And in this image, we have uh, some examples of it uh, with the fishermen cooperatives. However, this time there is a particular characteristic with introduction of the mechanization as shown here and what, we, what it appears to be an industrial fish, uh, fish smoker. This leads us to another lesson related to the formation of the working class. And here you have the introduction of, the, of labor with the introduction of the factory uh, and the workshop for the production of house utensils, working tools for agri agriculture, stoves, and the production of, of automobiles uh, and tires. I would like to go on uh, on this, but I think I'll leave I will leave it for the discussion, but could not end without bringing to the discussion the question of literacy and gender. In the textbook, women are here represented as workers, mothers, consumers, but uh, more importantly, as part of the education system, where you can see the image that she uh, can see in the image, she occupies the seat of the front row in the, in the classroom, or more importantly, she's also part of the alphabetization process as shown in the exercise, and I will translate one for you. Yesterday, 22 women attend literacy, uh, literacy classes. Today, five women came to the same class. How many women are in this class? So this is one example of bringing the topic of gender and alphabetization in the same, in a math uh, school, in a math uh, textbook. By a way of conclusion and opening to the discussion, as a document that represents the educational practice as well as the experience and the practice of the liberation struggle, school manuals as a pedagogic material 
provide great source for understanding how a transition process develops through, throughout time, how the principles and programs of the struggle and the envision of society were, were transmitted. The process of building socialism requires people with socialist consciousness. Being, being the act of liberation, an act of self-recreation, whose ambition is the creation of a new man and a new society, school manuals, by the importance they have in schools and societies, are crucial for understanding this process. They help us to understand and answer some of the following questions, some uh, raised by me, others raised by other scholars. So first question, how is socialist, uh, how is socialist consciousness formed outside the context of a socialist society. If people developed in large measure of the, of the basis of their experiences, how can they be provided with experiences which will enable a socialist mentality to emerge? How is the envision of spell, uh, spelling of a new man and his society portrayed in the school manuals? How were the school manuals designed and taught to achieve this end of the new man and society. And last, how did other experience on socialism and international solidarity influence these manuals, these, these manuals and how the, uh, are and where they present? I share with you uh, my last image, that this is an image of the teacher guide for the math textbook provided, produced by Achim Kindler that was shared by me by Jan and Frauke Dreisma, teachers at the Frelimo School. And I also take the opportunity to thank here, not uh, Jan and Frauke, but also Chris Sarn and Lily Winter for the enthusiastic, enthusiastic conversations with me on, guiding, on guide, guiding me in this research topic. Thank you very much for your attention. I look forward for the discussion and questions at this lecture raised on you that I'm sure will contribute for the enrichment of my work, research and reflections, mine and yours too. Thank you very much. <laughs>